Okay, um, so the next speaker we have on now is uh, Anna Gong, who is the CEO and founder of Perks Technologies. So Anna's got a, a very interesting uh, pedigree. She's spent um, you know, more than 12 years in San Francisco, working in the enterprise software environment for a number of startups, as well as some big multinational uh, companies. She then um, turned a two-year contract in Singapore into her next career step. Um, so she's now based in Singapore and Japan, and she runs Perks Technologies, which is a lifestyle marketing SaaS platform helping her customers to deliver meaningful customer engagement in a digital uh, in the digital economy. So uh, welcome to Happy Days, uh, Anna. Thank you very much, Sal. Um, I'm actually presenting this out of San Francisco. Uh, I've been okay. in the US for quite some time. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining me today. I think the million dollar question today is around, you know, how are organizations, uh, especially the B2C or B2B2C organizations, monetizing on customer actions in the API economy? And Perks, you know, we're, we created a lifestyle marketing category that fits into today's consumer behavior and how brands engage with their customers. And this is how we fast track, you know, our go to market leveraging an API first platform. And when we look at how today's flow will, will go through, um, I'll talk to you a little bit about the evolution of customer experience uh, and then how that's led by data and powered by pay, uh, APIs. And then we'll go into the, the proof and the case studies um, based on what we've learned uh, and how we actually help customers monetize on the API led uh, economy. And when we you know, first started, we looked at so many different segments, uh, especially traditional brands like banking, telcos, and all the hospitality brands and aviations that traditionally have been implementing loyalty management and loyalty solutions on the back end. And it's run like an archaic system today. Uh, unfortunately, it's still operating like an ERP uh, with finance and operations. But during those times, a few decades ago, um, finance and operations actually were running these solutions and really crunching the earning and burning of points. And when Perk started as well, we also thought of you know replacing these legacy loyalty management solutions. But over time, we realized that the burning problem is how do we actually work with data in motion and monetizing on customer actions in real time? Because as you can see in the last couple of decades, you know, ad tech and universal data, third party data created a lot of those uh, vanity metrics and different types of coalitions. And brands actually were reliant on that. Vanity metrics worked really well with brand building and popularity and so forth. Um, and that was required. But over time, as we got more and more digital and evolution, you know, many of these ad tech platforms and customers even wanted to see ROI around their, um, you know, their MarTech uh, investments, marketing investments, and so forth. And we saw that a lot of these ad tech platforms actually evolved into customer data platforms, requiring to integrate with other third party solutions or campaign analytic solutions or CRMs, and making sense of data in, in a centralized manner rather than a universal decentralized manner. And this, um, you know, the last 10 plus years have been, you know, defining those CDPs and their existence. But every one of these uh, solutions has still been working with data at rest and managing historical data. And they require some kind of um, dashboard or portal or engine to connect to the customers. And when you look at the today's economy where everything is mobile first and it's led by lifestyle ecosystems or super apps in Asia, as you call it, um, it requires brands to actually influence customer behavior like the influencers working on the natural um, you know, social media channels, social network channels. And that actually is what most of the closed loop environments like banking, fintechs, marketplaces, lifestyle super apps, they want to actually figure out how to actually cross sell, upsell their customer base. And you need everything to be powered by APIs because you need rapid deployment, rapid um, engagements. And this is what we'll talk about today. In the mobile first fintech and super app economy, you would see that everyone's trying to vie for this 4.3 billion, you know, wallet share or mind share of the customers. But at the same time, it's creating a very gray competitive landscape. 
You know, who would have thought that a telco in Singapore would get married with a super app like a ride hailing app and create a virtual bank? Who would have thought that an Air Asia airline would actually go after、um, food delivery, right? And that's a you know delivery service is traditionally a ride hailing、uh, logistics type of、uh, business model. And then you also look at you know banks and in traditional insurers that are trying to build marketplaces around themselves. So. When you have such technical debt or legacy, and you're in, in heavy processes, how do you design digital arms that can move much faster and leverage more ag- agility and APIs to rapidly deploy and actually, you know, achieve that digital transformation milestone? And recently, we we you know saw a number of reports saying that the banking executives are still saying that they're way behind the ball in terms of digital transformation. They might miss. The, you know, and heavily miss the milestones. But when you look at the million-dollar question of how organizations are actually monetizing on the customers' lifestyle behavior from morning to night to weekends, when they actually are ordering different types of services, they're managing their own, you know, spending patterns and behavior based on ad hoc, you know,、um, behavior. Um, it could be also influenced by certain themes, certain networks,、uh, certain. Um, geopolitical environments, and then now the pandemic, right? So, how are brands evolving quickly to manage and influence your closed loop of customer base, so that you are capturing the spend and patterns and behavior of your customers as they move from morning to evening to the weekends? And this is what most brands are missing. Unfortunately, most brands are still focusing on their core business, despite that they're trying to evolve and innovate outside of core to create more meaningful and high-value partnerships. And it's still the cross-sell and upselling and influencing customer behavior to actually pursue those other products and services outside of core that's been challenging. And this is where nudging and gamification and advanced rules base that's coming into play, where our platform has actually made a lot of significant、um, milestones for these、um, fintechs,、uh, digital natives, and then banking and telco clients of ours. When you look at acquisition, activation, this whole stream. You know,、uh, how do you, as a product owner or marketer today, engage your customers in the manner where you actually are capturing their entire evolution the minute that you acquire their、um, them as a customer, and, and they're transacting and activating with you to the heavy engagement in a 360 loop and keeping them keep coming back, and then growing、uh, customer lifetime value. That's the end of the day. That's the every brand's、um, you know aspiration and objective, and so we're seeing a lot of challenges actually around this area, right? Engagement, retention, and growth.、Um, brands have still unfortunately spent seventy, eighty percent of their marketing budget on acquisition, and then at the end of the day, they. Have not gotten themselves right on the engagement front, and there's a, a complete leaky bucket. And even the high growth unicorns or decacorns,、uh, when you have high growth, you can actually mask the churn. And with you know all the you know heavy investments in in the fintech space and a lot of digital native space, it's okay to mask that for now. But over time, you will have a shortfall of the customer lifetime value, and the churn will be too, becoming too great. And so there will be a lot of conversion and integration、uh, M and A, I would say, in the next few years based on this、uh, trend. And so when we look at data driven decisioning. Uh, unfortunately, we have seen, you know, not enough data in motion at play, so that you're not really reacting quickly, or you're not, you're not acting proactively to engage your next segment or your existing segment that's been extremely involved, or you know, brand ambassadors of your your company. And when we look at data in motion, and how do we measure journey milestones and customer customer journey is is、uh, one of the biggest challenges that we've seen.、Uh, brands have. On the, you know, have not been able to master or stitch together. Imagine a fintech company or any brand, a digital native. Once you acquire a set of,、uh, co- uh, I would say, a segment of customers from a social channel or other channels,、um, the minute they onboard, how do you actually drive the onboarding experience? Get them to activate. Get them to you know spend or do a cert- first. 
two, three transactions within the first 90 days? And then how do you influence them to refer a friend or build a team around their viral social network to transact even more or conduct those transactional or non-transactional activities that is more meaningful to your business? You can chain those different types of behaviors together, leveraging our APIs, mapping those customer journeys. And this is where the complexity have been made uh, and to be simplified. And so we have, you know, looked at all of this and how can you drag and drop different um, gamify user experiences and behavior, um, just like Robinhood has done successfully and they're filing for IPO. To, um, and they're using gamification at the core and some people are scrutinizing how they are using gamification for bad or um, for, you know, using it almost like a casino. But you can use gamification and API-led engagements and customer's journey by instantly gratifying your customers um, every milestone that they achieve. And this is where it changes the game on, you know, how do you drive more positive behavior? And certain geographies are driving more financial literacy. Uh, certain companies and banks and, and fintechs are saying we don't want to uh, promote too much credit card spend because there is debt problems at the moment. How do we actually transition the mindset of our customers and influence maybe increases in savings? Um, and then how do we actually drive more uh, debt recovery and debt collection with dignity and inclusive um, with you know, financial literacy as well into that. So it really depends on the objectives of the organizations to really drive and measure these brand and customer touch points and in-app transactions to chain those different behaviors together, leveraging APIs. And the problems that we've been seeing and solving, this is just a teaser of what different sectors that we've been solving, uh, solving for, you know, banking, FSI, uh, telcos, retailers, as well as e-commerce, and then the insure tech space. Um, many companies look at it from a business objective. My KPI is to grow in-app transactions, or as I was saying, you know, I'm a bank and now I'm adding a buy now, pay later adoption. But at the same time, I want to also drive maybe some financial literacy and increase debt collections rates so that my customers don't default so easily. Um, and so these are just specific, you know, most widely uh, deployed or, or common themes or business objectives that most companies want to actually um, figure out or, or lower the, the frictions. And so um, we can actually execute and scale. Uh, most brands are executing, you know, one campaign per month or per quarter if you're a legacy, you know, enterprise uh, with a lot of heavy processes and bureaucracy. But if, if you are now a product owner or marketer or influencer in your own internal system, if you have millions of customers like a bank, how can I actually repurpose my platform team to become internal influencers of my millions of customers to drive these behavior? And that's exactly what Instagram, you know, Facebook and all these other platforms have done is allow influencers in the gig and creator economy to drive reality drive user behavior, leveraging these affiliates and different, you know, outside third party influencers. But why, why can't we actually repurpose some of our team members to become influencers of our own closed loop environment? Because we know our customers so much better than outsiders. And so treating brands and not like e-commerce or lifestyle brands um, and some of these core services that we cannot live without as more centralized and more meaningful when you do it because you have so much intel and domain expertise around your customers. And if you look at, you know, how Amazon has spent so many years in building the tech backbone, the tech stack that powers today's marketplace, we are able to actually help large enterprises or traditional enterprises as well to innovate outside of core and to actually create instant rewards marketplaces or commerce marketplaces with drag and drop approach, where now, thanks to APIs, it takes only minutes to hours to stand up an e-commerce ecosystem. And that is really powerful because right now, most brands are still have a heavy partnership business development or merchant team that is dialing the phone and figuring out how to actually leverage the, or build up that whole ecosystem. But here with Perks, you can actually drag and drop within a few clicks and within you know a few minutes, depending on the complexity of the catalog that you're trying to build. Um, because most core brands, unfortunately, even e-commerce continuously give you know, benefits of discounts of your own products and services. 
uh, vouchers or you know loyalty points for your own products and services. But what if you actually can create a, a you know a variety or optionality for your brand to because you know the lifestyle and the essentials that would dangle in front of them if you give them you know a coffee voucher or e-commerce grocery voucher they will definitely spend it outside of the core service that you're um, trying to engage them with because everyone is giving out the same core products and services as rewards so this is a this allows the brands to actually expand and quickly engage their customers because you want to build this lifestyle ecosystem eventually right it can supplement or complement your existing lifestyle ecosystem if you don't have every one of them and your team may be focused on higher value partnerships whereas the lower lowest hanging fruit you can actually partner with uh, a company like ours to create. We had to create our own lifestyle marketing category um, for the SaaS space because, you know, customer engagement is so broad. Loyalty management is also very archaic, you know, it's very plain vanilla earning and burning of points. Lifestyle marketing is beyond CRM, beyond data at rest and customer records at rest. And beyond just sending an email, SMS, or, you know, working with chat bots and whatnot, and it really goes beyond click-throughs. It's way beyond just um, the, the vanity metrics that's produced by many of these brands. And, you know, gamification, as I was saying, and the rules-based engine um, coupled with the campaign management and the rewards have been one of the hottest selling modules and most popular ones because they really create instant gratification and really a closed loop viral social networking uh, environment and interaction within your uh, closed loop users. And so we've seen these, you know, the, within the first campaign, we're driving already ROI, instant ROI, no more vanity metrics, no more just click throughs. You're literally influencing your customers to spend, to transact or to behave with non-transactional behavior, like referring friends and maybe doing particular surveys or giving you uh, more data points around them or converting to e-billing or, or opt in to recurring billing. That is a tremendous LTV uh, add on to traditional banks um, as they see some of their customers are still paying, you know, and on the a non-automated manner. You know, when I say that, you know, many brands currently are so inundated with and, and also using and there's no right or wrong about it. But the, the market is already cluttered with a lot of marketing technologies that help brands send and communicate with their uh, customers. And then on the back end side, there's a lot of CRM data at rest, customer data platforms and traditional loyalty and rewards programs that are extremely expensive to maintain. What Perks would do is that this whole lifestyle marketing platform allows you to create so many different variations of customer behavior and creative gamification elements to drive campaigns. And if you have the rules, you can leverage them to send it to customers, um, if you're doing external touch points to drive them back into in that behavior, um, like you know, you're driving a Facebook ad and you're trying to drive them back into the app or maybe an acquisition, uh, or you're sending an email to a, a dormant list of customers, or you want to reignite a, a list of customers, you're sending an email. Um, those are great, but when it's mobile first and everything is mobile first. Um, the API speak for itself, right? You're mapping the customer journey. You're sending through perks without having to leverage any of these tools direct to the customers, chaining five or six different types of user behavior together. And in turn, you know, delighting them like a Pokemon Go type of campaign. Every milestone, they get instantly delighted. You can actually influence them to do so many different behaviors. You can chain leaderboard, badges, quests, building teams, and how do you effectively use game theory to drive and, you know, and really level the social behavior of these uh, customers that you have and instantly delighting them and giving them a seamless experience when they are delighted um, that they can actually redeem the rewards points or vouchers or however you, you would reward them uh, with lifestyle essential brands or luxury brands or any types of services or brands and experiences. And they would be redeeming it. You can actually track all of the last mile redemption behavior and fulfillment behavior as well. So we're not only just tracking the transactional, non-transactional behavior when you're influencing them, but once they get rewarded, we can track the redemption behavior, which is also key to understanding your, what moves the needle for your customers. 
and whether your campaigns and reward rewarding mechanism is really um, helping your customers uh, and nudging their their behavior and so forth. Um, so the case studies we have seen, you know, response to the super app phenomenon, one of the largest telcos in Malaysia, you know, they were really driving, um, you know, in building a rewards uh, marketplace and building a super app. You, when you see this as a telco, but when you open the app, it looks like a super app with all these different, um, you know, services. And you can add on all the different types of categories on the fly. Um, and so it doesn't require you to go back to IT or your design team or whatnot, um, as long as you have all of the, the logos, brands, the IO guidelines in place um, and all the, um, the different images you can just upload. And it resulted in over 67 million in-app transactions each month. So it helps them rapidly engage and become a super app by creating different categories and uploading those rewards, adding it m-commerce or e-commerce type of marketplace by selling these different products and services um, there is also you know a leading southeast asia telco um, with perks by integrating gamification it created so much virality that you know some of their campaigns would oversell within a split second uh, within literally the first two or three or five minutes, and they had to really re, re um, strategize on how to engage your customers because all of the rewards marketing budget um, actually were depleted within minutes every month. And so uh, it's a good problem to have. But you know, if you look at the marketers, they wanted to pace the the rate that their uh, customers are getting engaged and how they're rewarded and how they're coming back to the brand. And you can see these metrics during COVID and increase their monthly active users by 27%, retention by 6%, uh, acquisition um, through gamification and, and social interaction by 11%, and their NPS scores. You know, these are the metrics that really were meaningful or matters to the business for them. Um, but you can actually measure it so many different ways and slice and dice based on the stakeholder, the business units, objectives, um, mobile objectives, and so forth. Um, and this is another, um, you know, uh, one of the largest banks that we've been working with, um, the top 10 global bank uh, within, you know, in 2019, they actually drove transactions uh, worth of two hundred and fifty eight million dollars. Um, and within the first 60 days, they were driving campaigns within the thirty four million dollars. So the ROI that we produce is instant and no longer are we giving you click throughs, vanity metrics and so forth. Um, it actually acquired over two hundred twenty five percent in unique customers and, and drove over five hundred thousand customer actions. And you can define these segments um, as you go. And how do you want to engage particular segments to A-B test these assumptions um, and and how you would move the needle and move their actions. Um, so one of the leading Asia telcos, um, really good example, they pick a segment in the post-pay um, group of customers and they drove, um, you know, connected and figure out that 1 million customers was that segment that they want to engage with. And within that segment, over 670,000 customers' um, actions were actually um uh, engaged and unique customers actually. And so that's about, you know, 60 to 70% engagement rate and drove revenue of about 1.3 million with very, very little marketing spend, extremely low. And that really turned into a 25 X of return on just one single campaign within. And imagine if you actually launch and, you know, gamify the experience uh, and make it at scale if you can launch a hundred of these campaigns what would that look like in terms of top line growth for your organization and so just uh, something to end this presentation with our apis in action with one of our customers you know when you look at the lifestyle marketing platform how are we supercharging you know with acquisition activation um, and you know some of these uh, companies have been using gamification on targeting specific segments and these gamified campaigns rewarding them and then literally set to run for 24 hours as a time time bound uh, campaign we you know they want to do also um, uh, happy hour uh, campaigns as well from five to seven and so there's a lot of different ways that you can actually engage customers and the virality was so strong that they had to um, pace uh, and it ended in five minutes so this was an example that i mentioned um, you know to you guys 
And so over 200 or 2000 requests per second uh, happen within those five minutes. Uh, so these are viral engagement you know, uptakes when you actually gamify the campaigns and experiences for your customers is no, no longer static. It's no longer the customers seeking for it, but now you're actually being proactive and you're nudging your customers. And so this is the um, customer, you know, just this, our APIs at play. And you can see from, you know, the time um, last year, the start of COVID, you know, what that looks like in terms of, you know, one of our customers managing their APIs and just, you know, customers engaging with their um, mobile app. And I thought this was something cool to end with. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Anna. That's fascinating stuff. I was, I was actually involved in something similar to this uh, well, more probably about 15 years ago, before the advent of the smartphone. Yeah. Um, and we were doing kind of like event-driven marketing campaigns like that um, for some telcos in India and some banks and telcos in Asia. Um, and there we were sending uh, offers out through SMS. And it was, it was, to them, it was revolutionary that you could have such a cheap and instant channel like SMS. And it's fascinating to see how, like, 10 years later, now it's all about apps and uh, the, the, level of, the, the level of engagement and the, the speed with which you can engage is, has stepped up like an order of magnitude. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, is, is it Asia that's got a particular uh, propensity for this kind of uh, engagement? Or do we see that throughout the world? Do you have any ideas about the maybe the geographic or the social aspects of uh, the uptake? Well, I mean, gamification, you know, if you can couple that with, you know, advanced automation, uh, advanced analytics, it will drive the behavior. It's a new way of becoming a new campaign automation or marketing automation platform because yeah. gamification really moves the needle for customer behavior and nudging and really instantly gratifying for them for every milestone that you set. If you're doing a super save request every month, you actually just, you know, increase $10, $100 and whatnot. If you're driving savings for a particular Gen Z segment, and you're trying to drive financial literacy as well. I mean, you need to gamify the experience for the segment. You know, it's not targeting you or me. We're, we're the wrong genre for that. But yeah. in the future, when you level up, when you, you know, nudge the social behaviors, I'm challenged in a certain way, I will do better. I'm, I'm actually, you know, incented to actually go in and do it despite the rewards. So, but in the old days and still today, many traditional brands are focusing on the what. Yeah. What reward, what is it that I'm giving my customers, you know, and figuring out how to do a better what, but it's the how. And yes. the how in the global standpoint, if you look at platforms like Robinhood, it's an investment platform. Gamification drove the uptake of their entire customer base who's never invested a, a dime in their life in, in trading. And now they're going filing for IPO. Another, you know, a, a, a super advanced nature uh, which now many other e-commerce companies are trying to copy are coming out of China using gamification, gamification for group buying behavior. You know, so how do you, you know, like Pinduoduo increased to 600 million customers becoming one of the highest growth e-commerce platforms through teaming. If I am going to, you know, at this point, at this hour, if you can invite one or two more friends, I will give you 10% more discount or 20%. The more people you invite to buy the same product you're pr procuring right now, and then yeah. within the time bound, I will give you 20, 30, 40% discount. You, right? So it kind of creates this viral effect. It's gamification. Mm -hmm. It's yep. not playing a game, but it's gamifying the, the human behavior. Excellent. Yes. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned Pokemon Go because that was initially instantly one of the things I thought about as well, this you know, right. crowd behaviour. Right. Well, thanks a lot, Anna. Um, I don't think we've got time for any more questions, but um, thank you for uh, being part of API Days. And um, where can we find you on, on, on the socials? Uh, just like the previous founder, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm, I'm always uh, quite active and Twitter. Yeah. Excellent. So, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a pleasant okay, day. Bye. Thanks.